Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Cliff, and today I'm going to talk you through a very quick tutorial about how to present your graphical data that you get from SVSS, make it a little bit better, a little bit more user friendly, um, a little bit more more visually better for you, and how to change a graph like this that you may get from SVSS into something that looks like this, so a bit more professional, a little bit better. So. You've ran some frequencies, for example. For example, here, this graph is showing across a population. They, if they believe that field work, and particularly technology and field work, increases their employability skills. And we have a range here from strongly disagree to strongly agree. So you may well have something similar uh, in, in your work. So often, when you have data like this, it's really good to present it as a graph rather than as a table, because tables can be quite confusing at times. Um, this you can see at the snapshot here that a lot of the population I really agree a lot more than strongly agree and only a very few disagree to that statement now there's nothing wrong with SPSS and its graphs that it produces per se you know it's still presenting the right data graphically um, but there are some issues so first and foremost for example here the axis titles aren't quite correct. There's also an issue of, for example, if you paste this, if you just copy and paste this in, copy and then paste that into your Word document, some of the issues are here. Well, it says strongly disagree, but what number is that? Is that two, three, four, five? Very, very hard to tell. Similar here as well, agree. What's 40? Is that 45? Is that is that percentage or is that frequency? Again, very, very difficult for the reader to tell. Also, one of the other issues is this font is probably not the font that you're actually using in your thesis. So typically I recommend that theses are written in Garamond. So I've seen students before where they just right click, copy, paste this directly into their work. The font's different. It breaks up the flow a little bit because I know that you just copied and pasted that in there. Now, as a reader and an examiner, my first thoughts that come to mind is, well, this student hasn't taken any care in their work because they've just produced a graph that quickly in SPSS. They just copied and pasted it in. They haven't changed any of these to make these correct. They haven't bothered to change any colours, not changed, bothered to change the font. So that gives me an impression that the student hasn't taken any care in their work. And if they haven't taken any care, does that mean they've not really understood their results? That's going to play in my mind when I'm going through and marking. So we don't want that to happen to you guys, that's why you're here doing this tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to make this into that, which looks a lot better, a lot neater, and certainly fits in with the structure and style of your thesis. So above here is where you have your table that's been produced from SPSS. <clears throat> I want you to go ahead and right click that, copy it, and I want you to go ahead and open up an Excel Word file. So you've opened up your new blank Excel workbook, go to A1 and then Control V and that will add in your table that we've had before. Now it's not quite ready to use just yet, we need to get rid of quite a few things. So if we click the number one here and then we want to click right click and then delete, we also want to get rid of this A down here, highlight the A, click delete. And then we want to get rid of these three across the top, highlight them, delete them. And we also want to get rid of our total, our 99s, and the overall 1, 2, 6, 7, and 8. Right click, delete. And then we're left with these, which is great. This is exactly what we want. So if you hide all of them, then go to insert, and then recommended charts. So this will give you different varieties of options, you can have a horizontal uh, bar graph, a pie chart, or a vertical. So I'd say for this one a vertical is the good one to go for. So we'll click on that, we'll click OK, and then this produces a graph for you. So we'll just make this slightly a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Now you might think to yourself, well what's the difference between that and the one that SPSS produces? And you'd be right, there is nothing different at all. 
So we need to go ahead and do some things to this to make sure that it is correct. So the first thing we want to do, well, we want to give it a title. So the title of this one is, is Feel Where Can Enhance My Employability Skills. You want to highlight that, go to home, and then you want to change it to whatever font your thesis is in. So for mine, that is Garamond. So I've changed that. And I also want it bold as well because it's my title. While I'm here, I want to change all of this text and numbers to Garamond as well. So Garamond, just click on there so it's highlighted. Garamond. Now, obviously, a really good uh, graph should always have access titles. So if you go to design along the top here where your chart tools are, click add chart element, then access titles, our primary horizontal one. This would be agreement level. Highlight that. Home. Garamond. I want that bold. Back to design. Add chart element. Access title. The vertical. This would be frequency. If you're using percentages, then obviously this will change to percentage. Go to home, Garamond again, and I also want that to be bold. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now, again, this is fine. You've got your blue text uh, here. You've got your blue lines. Again, yeah, that's okay. But typically, you'll find if you ever read any academic articles, and certainly in the print versions, that often you don't find coloured graphs. Now, there's a particularly good reason for that, and that's because it costs a hell of a lot of money to print uh, coloured uh, journals. So to get around that, and you may find this yourselves as well, if you're printing your thesis, that you'll be charged extra for any pages that have colouring. So how do we get around that then? Well, typically in an academic sense, we use stuff called patterns. So if you look here, you know, it's not just grey, it's actually got a pattern to it. So really useful is using patterns to differentiate between uh, your work. Still giving it that little jazzy kind of um, pizzazz to it, but not having that colour, which is going to cost you money. So all you simply do is double click on one of um, the levels that you've got here. And that will highlight them all. As you can see here, we've got four dots around each one. If you want to have a different pattern for each individual um, level that you've got, then simply just double click on one of them. So it's highlighted and you can double click on the next one. And then anything you change will just be located in that. But we don't want that. We want to select them all. You want to click on the paint tin here. You want to go down here to pattern fill. And this is where you'll have a choice of all different patterns that you can use. So I quite like the, the blocked pattern here with the little dots in. Let's have that one there. If you go to foreground colour, you can change the colour. Again, I'll go for a grey because that's going to save me money. And then background colour of white is fine. Your border, make sure that you have a solid line. Make sure that your colour is matching. And if we click off that, there we go, we've got a nice block colour, and in fact, I'm probably going to change that to a slightly lighter grey, I think, because it doesn't look quite as nice. There we go, that's better. Click off that, there we go, that looks much better now. Now, like we had before, the issue is you can't tell where those numbers are, so once you've done this, double click on it, right click, add data labels, add data labels, They've all been added in. Click on one of them. Click home. Garamond. Bold. And then we're done. So we've changed this graph into this looking graph. Simply right click, copy it, and then you go and paste that into a Word document. And then you'll end up something that looks like that in your work. So looks a hell of a lot better. Obviously, don't forget to um, add your titles in there. And don't forget to cross-reference them as well. Um, so I have a tutorial on that, which you can find in the link, which will tell you how to cross-reference facts and figures. And there you go. It's as simple as that.
Good luck with your work. Thank you.